Take a 61-year-old former church organist named Virgil Fox. Combine him with David Snyder's Revelation Lights and the 144-speaker Rogers touring organ and the music of Johann Sebastian Bach, and you have what some critics are calling an absolute mind-bender. The promoters call it heavy organ, and it was last weekend in St. Paul. mind, an overwhelming heart, and a transcendental spirit, and you can't beat that. Once you've had a view of Bach, you never again will be the same. It takes an entire day to set up the ton and a half of equipment known as Revelation Lights. It's all the creation of David Snyder, who calls himself the world's only classical Lumierist, a word he invented himself from the French word for light. Revelation Lights uh, is really a light instrument. It, it is controlled by uh, a central console. It has 72 channels on it and dozens of switches, which give me the control of many motors, projectors, prisms, lots and lots of mylar and mirrors, little pieces of glass, and little bits of this, little bits of that. But all of those little bits were hand cut and handmade by me and stuck on in a specific place, hopefully to do a certain job at a certain time. David Snyder doesn't like the term light show. He prefers to call what he produces a light experience. He feels that the light show techniques normally associated with rock concerts are hostile and percussive, and that he has brought the art to new levels of expression. Uh, I felt that uh, the light show that was uh, in rock halls had reached its limit. I felt that young people are becoming bored with rock, so the intent was to to take a valid art form, uh, something that young people can, of course, relate to, which is lights, and to make this relevant to uh, the performance of classical music. Uh, hopefully, people will tend to know Bach better in classical music, and perhaps even David Snyder. <laughs> uh, the timing element of what I do is very important, because if I lag, if I am too slow, then it gives the person that is watching the idea that I am uh, uh, following up a sound that Virgil Fox is making, and I don't like to give this impression. I like to be right along with him because it is a simultaneous performance. Everything that happens on that screen is a further enunciation of what the music is doing. You see, Bach is the one composer that can take any amount of color and any amount of shape an exaggeration, if you please, of the, the enunciation. He is a cathedral builder in sound. I think that the box saw things 
music is vibration, light is vibration, and to listen to, to listen to sound somewhere inside of you, it has to strike your imagination. I think Bach would be delighted. There is a plan, you see, where we would like to get smell and taste and touch involved in what we do with the sight and the hearing. At a moment like that, I think the human would just have to absolutely give in, <laughs> let go, because the trip is on. <laughs> with a gang of creeps who call themselves purists. You want to know who they are? I'll tell you who they are. They're the ones that talk about it, but can't do it. These odd balls call it the little fugue. They put on an eight and a two foot stop. You don't know what that means, but it's just a poop on one end and a poop on the other. <laughs> And they sit there playing their little typewriters like note-pushing nobodies during this piece. I'm going to give you the theme of the short G minor and you decide whether this is heroic stuff or whether they are right. Here's the tune. as if all the music in the world could possibly be lined up on this side. And then Bach, the greatest composer of all, stuck over here in some kind of a glass case in a museum under dust next to a comb that some dead queen wore in her hair 3,000 years ago. Not on your life. The sermon is over. We're about to start with the real thing. I don't talk about it. I propose to get on that machine and do it. You see, the purists are a gang of absolute creeps who hide behind their little squeaky conversations about the limitations of 200 years ago. The mainstream of life is going right past them. They don't have blood in their veins, they have water. They're a bunch of four flushing fakes. And when these critics take lambasting at me, they do it for one reason. They are little unknown nobodies, and they say things to attract attention to themselves. My Bach is alive. The purest Bach is dead. They sit around and say, well, of course, what Fox plays is not Bach. They are 100% in error. I make it exactly as Bach wrote it, and I give it color, and I give it gut.
There's no point in standing around being modest about it. I'm not modest. I know that I can do the thing that I tell them I'm going to do. And I sit down and jolly well do it. It is a trip, and the difference between my trip and anybody else's is that I come out clean.